Hello, my name is James Morgan, and I'm here with Maya Ackerman, and we're going to be talking about Arido Tarajo, which was a, an operatic short that we made back in 2018. Um, I am an artist, and uh, I work at uh, San Jose State University. Uh, I teach in the computer science department and the art department in digital media. Primarily, I work with games and game environments. I am Maya Ackerman. Um, I am an assistant professor at the computer science and engineering department at Santa Clara University. In my parallel life, I am um, CEO and co-founder of Musical AI Startup Wave AI. And in my other parallel life, when I have the time, I sing, um, used to focus on opera for a long time, and uh, I write songs. <laughs> And uh, the way that we sort of like came together was really interesting. Um, for a while, Maya was teaching at San Jose State. We met each other and I was like, I've been thinking about making an opera. And, and uh, Maya was like, I've been working on an artificial intelligence uh, algorithm that writes in the style of Giacomo Puccini. And so this this connection was just made like and it was really simple and really straightforward. Um, so I guess the first thing I want to think about is like like why we chose to do a musical, why this and how this ended up being opera. And I guess I've already answered part of that already, right? We have the Giacomo Puccini, Robocini, right? Properly, uh, Robocini that writes in the style of uh, Giacomo Puccini. Um, but how did how how did you end up making? Um, an algorithm that wrote in that style, where did that come from? So uh, this was really the early phases of what has become essentially my life journey. I struggled with songwriting during my PhD. So I kind of had this interesting dual education. So my formal, edu my formal education is in computer science. I was focusing on theoretical foundations of cluster analysis. Um, and then I learned how to sing opera. Uh, privately during my PhD, which became a really, really important part of my life. Started singing semi-professionally about nine months later. And uh, soon after, developed a very profound desire to write my own music, which proved to be very difficult. Um, it's one thing to write something, and it's another thing to try to write something that really expresses what you're feeling, really expresses what you want to express. And it's this sort of like self-exploration in this almost new language in the language of music um, is very complex uh, and very challenging. I found it to be very, very challenging. Um, and then several years later, I discovered, you know, what you might know as creative AI or computational creativity, which this is back in 2014. Nobody really thinks about this or except this incredible community of computational creativity researchers, which I was very fortunate to run across. And, um, during the very first talk of the International Conference on Computational Creativity that I've had the pleasure of attending, um, I had the idea of building a system that would help me with the part of music writing that I struggled with, with most, which is converting text to melodies. So if I say something like, this is so fun, how would you sing it? You could sing it, this is so fun, or this is so fun, right? There's so many options. Um, and so we built a system for that. And then this kind of incredibly serendipitous meeting with with James, with him saying that he wants to do an opera, an Italian aria, I was just like blown away, kind of combining these two interests I had. And so we actually built for Boccini, sort of retrained it from English text, retrained our system, it was called Alicia at the time, retrained it on the works of Giacomo Puccini and ended up with a system that takes Italian text now and then creates melodies now in the style of Giacomo Puccini. And it was mind blowing. It was mind blowing to see what James has created with it. Keep in mind that James is not a musician. Uh, he's an artist, but not a musician. And that mm -hmm. really was the first really massive indicator for me of the power of this technology that we were creating. I love the way that our uh, our pathways to this like have like sort of overlapped in an interesting way. Um, I, yeah, I've always, I guess I've always envied musicians and wanted to, to work more in music. I, I did my master's thesis on uh, the special theory of relativity, but did it as a musical, but I can, 
I can, uh, you know, worked with living humans in that. And I thought that that was like, you know, sort of the pinnacle of it. And then, you know, sort of throwing this idea around of making opera. Well, I mean, it's got to be an Italian because it's it's opera, right? Um, it, it's, it's funny to me that working with this artificial intelligence was, I felt a lot closer to it than I felt with my human collaborators when I was uh, doing Einstein. And part of it was that it was running in this little box on my on my computer, but um, but the behavior with the humans was I would send out the lyrics, and then I would get back music, and it would be like all done. But with uh, with Robocini, it was much more of a collaboration. It would kick out like a a line or a phrase to me, and I'd have to figure out how that fit. You know, I love that you're bringing it up, and this is something you know since uh, James and I. Did this amazing project since we did this amazing project um you know i've opened up a company i've had a lot of people play with our different ai systems that are kind of built around this collaborative um sphere and what i find really fascinating is the spectrum of expectation versus reality so for some reason we've been taught well not for some reason because all the big companies sort of sell this message that the ais are autonomous hey look they can do it as well as us subtext they can do it better than us really soon and take our jobs right and take our jobs <laughs> it's it, it's understandably terrifying yeah. so i'm completely i've sort of come full circle and i really think that it is the responsibility of the technologies to consider how their tech is getting used and what's really amazing is that i repeatedly hear in all the ways in which this automated collaborator is more flexible more easygoing more collaborative Mm -hmm. And some human experiences, I'm not going to say it's better than all human collaborators, that would be absurd, but it really compares well in its offering. And it's not this sort of like, imp sometimes working with a person can be more imperviable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just remember like Robotini was there when I opened it up at three o'clock in the morning and realized I had like, you know, 20 or 30 minutes and something in my mind about a nice rhyme or something like that. Um, Working with people, you only get to deal with their schedules and that sort of stuff. And um, and whereas I think Robertini was like was really narrow in its like sort of understanding and its ability to collaborate. It was an expert. It made melodies. It made lots of melodies. It made as many as I would as many as I would care to have from it. Right. Um, and it was just about like sort of learning how what it what what I could expect from it. And once I adapted to it, we became perfect collaborators. It's uh, kind of almost serendipitous that we are bringing up this project now because we're about to release the English version of Robocini, essentially the melodies. We've been focusing on lyrics for so long and I'm really getting a sense from hearing you talk about it, which I always found that's just like, I understand my own technology better when mm -hmm. you talk about it, how the interaction with an automated, automated lyrics maker and an interaction with an automated melody maker, these are different collaborators and looks mm -hmm. like qualitatively different. So it's just fascinating, this, the texture of these different collaborations. I had a little bit of that experience because I don't speak any Italian. Uh, and so I ended up, in, and I don't know that I recommend this, but I ended up using Google Translate a little bit. I had somebody who helped with some Italian translation, but they weren't focused on meter and rhyming. So oftentimes I would go into Google Translate and I would look for a similar word that maybe sounded a little bit better, but it would have to go back to my translator as well, just to make sure that I hadn't mixed something up or made it just like really strange, right? I find it so wild. You wrote an Italian aria without being a musician and without speaking Italian. Mm -hmm. And it is fabulous. And and this is this is the future that I that I envision. Uh, empowering artists, right? Empowering artists with AI to be able to do things that are not within their expertise. And, and that was what I really loved about this. This sort of this really scratched an itch for me. And I and I loved working with the project. So let's uh let's talk a, just a little bit about the project itself. Um, I know a lot of this ended up coming from like you know from my history and my past working with uh, virtual environments. It takes place in a game. It takes place in World of Warcraft. Um, 
but uh, in in our conversation, we sort of constructed this character of Dahlia, right? And dare I say, we modeled it a little bit after your life, just a little bit, a tiny bit, yeah. as a. And forgive me if I'm being a, a little overly complimentary, but a strong woman in a in a world of that is occasionally a little bit challenging towards strong women, uh, but <laughs> but with but with respect to just sort of like we were able to like shift the story to really being about about the individual and their sort of reflection on it, and uh, and just uh, just having this like a beautiful like sort of flying through these fields and just looking at how gorgeous the world is and just appreciating the moment. So magical. You know, one of my favorite parts of the project um, was actually singing Dahlia's mm -hmm. part. It was really, uh, it was uh, a little bit challenging, you know, it's a, uh, it's not an easy aria that you, you <laughs> wrote. And I found it to be just so beautiful. And so um, really helping me grow as an artist to get a really good sound in that, um, in that artwork. I really enjoyed it as an artist as well, as well as a technologist. My favorite part about writing it was, um, and this is something I did in my thesis as well, but like having control over the lyrics, I was able to get a couple of like little nods in there to some of the culture. Like there's a beautiful reference to Chuck Norris in there. Um, and also just when, because uh, Dahlia is like uh, like half Minotaur, she's half cow, just to have her just like bust out with this amazing moo while she's flying. It just like, it, it, it just feels like it connects so well to the personality of Dahlia and the history of the world and just like weaves it all together in such a lovely way. I love the move. That was so fun. <laughs> it kind of breaks. This project goes through so many barriers. It's incredible. I also, um, it's kind of funny. I ended up, uh, since we've done this project, I actually ended up doing some academic research around women's rights and sort of sexism. And um, having come to appreciate, well, a lot of firsthand experience, experiences of the female founder kind of suddenly being thrown in this just exceedingly sexist environment. And then realizing from the data that it's sort of not just me and that this is prevalent, that this is a norm, treating women as a second class citizen doesn't even fully sort of capture this experience. So sort of tying it back now that we got to do this project we got to convey this really powerful character, um, just brings a whole new layer of meaning for me in this project. I, I love this and I'm excited that uh, we're in we're in talks again to continue this project. Um, and uh, at this point, I mean, I'm like looking at the amount of work that we did. I, I'm a little scared, I'll admit it, but uh, also a little bit excited. Um, I did want to talk just a little bit about this idea of like like working across disciplines because I think that it's really sort of beautiful the way that this all ended up. Um, it comes off to me as very much of like a film project with working with gigantic groups of people like in different spaces. But I mean, just working between like the arts and engineering, working with like sort of like the collaboration with the artificial intelligence, working with our machinimist, uh, Chantal Harvey, um, and like sort of dialing in the singing as well as the engineering. Uh, I guess I, I don't I guess I don't have much of a, a statement in there other than like I'm a little overwhelmed. I think uh, I think this was such a such a really thrilling part of the experience, how interdisciplinary it is. And I feel like I always like my whole understanding about what art is completely transformed from working with you. Um, but I feel like in some ways we live in this world that's so ridiculous like reduces humans to limited roles, reduces us to workers and consumers. Um, and I don't think that's a human, that's what the human spirit has ever been about. And art, especially art that's not afraid to write boundaries between disciplines, between topics, between sort of anything um, that just connects so much more to sort of the essence of humanity and what we're all about. So it, it has mm -hmm. really profound meaning for me. It, it really feels like, again, it feels like it's the future. And we're going to see a lot more of this. Um, I, I did want to ask you a little bit about like sort of the commercial outgrowth uh, from Robocini and 
and dare I say even a little bit from the project but I think so I think it was sort of one of the so I've had my own use case. So we created the system in English, essentially Robocini in English, which we called Alicia, that would create these melodies from text in English. And suddenly I found that it was much easier for me to write music. So I had this like use case on myself, uh, which as a scientist, I had a big question mark next to it. You know, you gain a lot of intuition through what works for you, but you have to be careful to not generalize it too much. And then watching you being able to create this just, insanely awesome piece of art with an Italian version of Alicia, it really got me thinking, okay, this is real, this is real. Um, I have to share that for an academic, for an academic musician, you know, sort of sensitive soul, if you will, jumping into business was very, very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. And it's having such a strong use case in front of me it's kind of like amplified within my heart kind of the responsibility that I have. Um, some projects are not meant to live in academia alone. And this was very clear that this was one of those projects because it was bringing in something very real, new dimensions into the human creative experience and we had to get it out. Um, so yeah, we ended up focusing on lyrics for a long time, but right now over the next months or two, we're gonna start releasing the English version of Robocini, but in into the wild, um, it's a uh, it's a dream. So, so this may be getting a little bit ahead of things, but are there other language versions planned as well? Or uh, we played around with Japanese. Uh, we're oh wow! <laughs> we had a lot of yeah, we had a lot of requests for Spanish. We discovered that some of our users have shared with us that they kind of use Google Translate in conjunction with Lyric Studio. So they translate it that way, but you know, I think um, there's value in doing it from the AI itself. So it's, uh, you have to think about so many other things. Like you use <laughs> Robocini and command line, right? Like yes. no user interface, just like the most rudimentary way. And so much of what you do as a business, kind of when you, when you commercialize a research project, is really think about every little tiny thing and you keep iterating on the details of the user experience. So it was it was kind of amazing how little you needed in that regard to be able to benefit from hmm. technology. <laughs> um, I, I I think I fell in love with Robertini the first uh, the first few lines that I put into it, right? Just uh, just seeing all of the different variations that it was able to kick out, I knew that we were going to get something from it. I mean, this is just, it's just like, this is the future. This is where things mm -hmm. are going and it's becoming more obvious now. I mean, we started this so long ago, right? Like we were working on it before anybody was thinking about any of this. But since then, I mean, OpenAI did us a great favor. It's starting to sort of normalize mm -hmm. collaboration with AI through GPT-3 right now through DALI. So like, this is where the world is heading and our job is to offer it in a way that elevates human beings. I think that's really the part that I see missing sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like this was like far ahead beyond its time, sort of Arido Tarajo paved the way to a new world. Um, so yeah, I'm like really excited for the future and I want to invite everybody to watch Arido Tarajo and please feel free to give us comments. Um, we had a, we had a wonderful time making it and we have plans for the future. So with that, I'm just going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. And we'll look forward to the future. <laughs>